Today is Thursday, uh, May the 17th, 2018, and we're in Matthew 5, in the Sermon on the Mount, these three chapters, 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew, which describe the greatest message ever preached by Jesus Christ himself. I'm reading verses 17 through 20 again, where it says, Do not think that I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Today and tomorrow, I want to take time to talk about the righteousness of the Pharisees and how our righteousness should exceed their righteousness. Remember what Christ is saying in these scriptures as we talk through how he fulfilled the law and the prophets that don't break these commandments. But if you teach them and do them, you'll be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The righteousness that Christ was speaking about should make it plain to all who call themselves Christians that Christianity is not an easy way out or an easy way in. That any time man begins to be a law to himself or is the law, society will disintegrate. He says human righteousness is not the answer. In fact, let no one tell you that human righteousness is the answer. Hell is full of human righteousness. We need to recognize the imperfection of human righteousness and become clothed in the righteousness of God by the acceptance of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, as the one who took our place on the cross of Calvary. Now Christ is seeking to show us by the Pharisees and scribes that human righteousness was no good. So what was the Pharisees' righteousness like? Well, let's read Luke 18, 14 through, uh, or 10 through 14, and I think it will help us understand it. Two men went up on the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, rather than the other, for everyone who exalts himself shall be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So we're getting a picture of the Pharisees and the scribes' righteousness. First of all, it's external. They do all the right things. They still have no righteousness. <laughs> they worship in style. They have religion, but they don't have the heart or the spirit in it. Be careful because... Today, in Christianity, we often delude and fool ourselves. It's most important what's on the inside, because they that worship the Father must worship in spirit and truth. The Pharisees and scribes' righteousness was a concern over the ceremonial more than over the moral. This is, again, a repetition of following the ex external to the T. They were more concerned about doing that than having their heart right with God. Another aspect of the Pharisees' righteousness was that they followed man-made rules and regulations. And these man-made rules and, and, and explanations and regulations in the Mishnah and later in the Talmud, were they actually replaced the law of God. They became the law. And as the Pharisees said in this prayer in, in Luke 18, 10 through 14, the Pharisees and the scribes are concerned about their self-righteousness to the point of self-satisfaction. 
Luke 18 and 11, I thank God I'm not like other men. Hmm. The Pharisees lessened commands by addition. And they taught others to do so. Here was the law. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And before it's over with, you can't carry, you can't do any work. Work's defined as carrying a burden. A burden's defined as uh, one swallow of, of, a, of milk. Almost what you and I would consider today ludicrous. Uh, wrong intent. Disobedience plus denial equals disgrace. Doing our obedience plus disseminating equals distinction. In other words, Jesus said, he who teaches and does the law will be considered great in the kingdom. Whoever teaches men to break it, one of the least of these shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. So we see the Pharisees, and this is, this is the lesson for us today. We see the Pharisees all about the outside, the external, the show. The performance, nothing about the spirit of the heart. Well, God help us today and may we let the Holy Spirit search us that we be not like the Pharisees. But our righteousness, he says, is to exceed it. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses every one of us from all unrighteousness and clothes us in the robe of righteousness, which Jesus gives to us. Thank you for the pardon of our sin. Help us not to entertain it again, not to go back to it. Free us from the bondages of the past. We praise you for it. May your name be glorified. We love you today in Christ's name. Amen. Have a great day.